when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is this is 4F Beauty and this is a tutorial using the mini gold palette from Natasha Zanona. So, if you want to find out exactly how well, or otherwise, this particular palette performs, and then you, my friend, are in precisely the right place. As I have said for some time, and oft here echoed elsewhere, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, hello my lovelies. Welcome back from the intro. Okie dokie. Uh, you would have seen from the intro that despite me saying I wasn't going to buy any more, I bought another mini Natasha Denona. If you've seen... Oh, excuse me, burp squad. If you've seen my film where I use the W7 palette which is a dupe for her gold palette you will have seen how much I really 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 liked it this is what I'm talking about 24k gold rush and as you can see although it's laid out like an Anastasia palette it is a dupe for the Natasha Denona gold palette which clearly I can't afford um, and then I was ordering one of the Wayne Goss lippies from Beautylish. And if you spend over, I think it's $35, um, you got free shipping. And they had that on the page that you landed on, which is the little mini gold palette. So, against my better judgement... <laughs> I picked one up, as you can no doubt tell. So, the other one that I have got, let me just move this one in. So, I'm getting to the drawer properly. The other one I've got is the little mini Tropic palette, because that was the other one of our palettes that I like, but I only like the bottom row. So then when she released the bottom row, just in a mini palette, I was like, I'll have me some of that. Um, but I wasn't overly impressed by it, and what really bugged me with that one was that I bought it from her site, and then it arrived. There was It arrived, there was no import fee to get it released or anything. Then I got a bill through for import fee, which was more than the damn palette in the first place. So I thought, right. Because as well as the import fee, they put a handling charge on, and the handling charge was more than the import fee. But with Beautylish, you pay the tax up front, so you don't get any fees on arrival, because you don't get a handling fee. And although, I mean, it bugs me, paying 20 bloody percent tax, not just on what you buy, but on the shipping charge as well. Let that one sink in. Um... But I begrudge paying a handling fee when, you know, you you go online and pay. It's not like you've got to go to somewhere and they've got to actually have a person to deal with it. It's all automated. So, I'm going to give this a bit of a go today. Um, something else that I have been using, which I'm really quite liking... This e.l.f. Coconut Hydrating Mist. I moisturised my skin, um, SPF'd it, etc. Primed it. I used the, funny enough, e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer today because I felt that my my pores were a little, a little visible today, shall we say. Like they're not anyway. Um, but I'd seen that this was a dupe for the Too Faced Hangover Spray. 
and I've had a trial sample of that in the past and really liked it and this does feel exactly the same. Um, hydrates skin and refreshes makeup with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E so after I'd primed and put my Chrome Pebble Eye Primer on I gave myself a spritz of this which has been drying while I've been talking to you. Uh -huh. Now talking of while I'm talking to you um, you will have seen from the length of this film that it is longer than the majority of tutorial films. This is because I don't speed any blending up and I don't cut any blending out. If that means this is too long a film for you, there's a speed widget up there, just put me on like one and a half or two. I really don't mind, I really don't care. But what I do care about is that if people are following on and they are beginners, I want them to be able to keep up with me and not have to keep pausing it and have their screen lock and then have to unlock the... Let's just not go there, huh? So, uh, I'm going to start off using the Boozy Shop Tapered Blending Brush. All of my brushes are clean, but this used to have white bristles, well, cream bristles, but you can see the tips of them are stained a little bit orange. Washed three quarters of my makeup brushes the other day Ugh. but I did it while I was watching the telly so it felt like it was not really a chore um, if you wonder what I use to clean my brushes I use this it's a bit expensive compared to most brush cleaners I'm not even sure it's designed to be a brush cleaner but I like it because it leaves them super soft which Long term viewers will know I have fibro, which means the slightest touch to my skin can be extremely painful. Now, with this being a teaching channel, one of the things that I had noticed is that I've got deep set eyes and a lot of people with deep set eyes are mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told that they have hooded lids. The reason they get told this is because hooded lids and deep set eyes suffer from the same issues in terms of how your eyeshadow wears through the day. So I always include in my tutorials a little clip where I talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded eyes and the workarounds for each type of eye. Although they have similar issues in terms of eyeshadow wear the best way to apply them to get the best look for your eye are actually quite different. So, if you've not been here before, when I zoom in, I don't just go from here to here, I go to here, literally just my eyes on the screen. So even if you're watching me on your phone, you will be able to follow along the teaching channel. So, I'll insert that clip now and once that's finished I will be back to apply some of this to these. Now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with 
a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Okie dokie. So, tiny weeny little palette. The shades are uh, Lodge, Dark Sepia, Dor, D apostrophe O R, which obviously is French for gold, I think. I think it's French for gold. Bia, B I A, and Anthea. So, I'm just going to call them one, two, three, four, five. So, I'm going to start off with the first shade, which is a neutral. Brian. Now, always hold the brush at the very end so you put as little pressure on your eye as possible. Uh, these are stick on nails, I have not been to a salon. They are still all shut. Now, we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz of blending. I call it this to help stick in your mind the type of blending to use. So, you do natural turns towards the nose, a bit of a fleckle when we get there, and then reverse turns to come back out again. Okay. Now, the reason that I do this is because I'm 46 years old. Over the last few years, despite being disabled and not able to move around very much, I've lost over 14 stone, which is over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing it this way, what we're doing 
It's very gently moving the skin around to ensure that we don't get that tiger striping. If we just do the windshield wiper that you see all these 20 year old doing, your skin folds over on itself and you can end up with like a tiger stripe and the windshield wiper, although I do do that every so often, I find that this pulls your eyelid about significantly less. So it's much kinder to your eyes in the long run. I mean, I know 20 year olds that have always been slim that have looser eyelids and have to utilize this method too. I do sometimes struggle here and here because I get very dry patches just there. Um, although my skin is oily combo, I do get dry patches there, um, almost like an eczema. But so far, this is blending quite nicely, but then it's a brown. Browns are the easiest shade to create, so it should be blending nicely. How's your day? Is it a good one? Or are you at the start of your day and not quite sure how it's going to be yet? I try and keep... I, I tend to touch on the current issue of the world, as in, you know, how are you? Are you okay? Are you coping? Have your kids driven you mad yet? Has your husband driven you mad yet? Has your wife driven you mad yet? You know, have you got used to not wearing pants in office meetings? You know. <laughs> but I also like to try and keep things focused on the makeup, focused on fun, just to give you a couple of minutes when you don't actually have to think about it. But if you've had a crappy day, I hope tomorrow's better. That's blended quite nicely. I sit back and I check the shape of both of them because unlike a certain Jimmy Chuck, I don't Photoshop my results. I don't use any skin smoothing tools. The only filters that I use are Snapchat ones, which are bloody obvious because I'll have like horns or I'll have like elliptical pupils or but I always put up, the first few um, photos that I put up will always be unfiltered where the most I would do is brighten it up if I've lost light or it's not reflecting the colours correctly. That's the most I ever do. I never use any skin smoothing tools. I don't use any blurring. Uh, and likewise, I don't use colour switches anymore because they're far too harsh on your bristles especially your natural brushes. I mean, this is synthetic, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this brush off on a microfiber cloth. Um, I've got two or three microfiber cloths. I've also got uh, washcloths, which although clean, as you can see, pigments have stained it, because um, that is fresh out of the washing machine. Um, but I just find this is a much gentler way of removing excess pigment from the brush so that you can use it again on a different colour without having to clean it in between. And by clean it I obviously mean wet clean. Right, I'm going to go into the only other matte in here which is a lovely olive or khaki green which, I mean I do like these little quint palettes but obviously it does restrict you an awful lot to what sort of look you can produce. I mean, in this one, for example, these are the only two mattes. Now, that doesn't really worry me because I'll happily use a shimmer from my crease um, and up the eye anyway, because if you use a shimmer with a brush like this, nine times out of ten you end up buffing the majority of the shimmer pigment away, leaving the base colour pigment behind. So don't ever be frightened of using shimmers 
further up your eye or in your crease regardless of your age because a lot of it really just depends on how you actually apply the pigment. I've got to be honest, although I'm enjoying using this because I'm loving the colours, these aren't blending any better than that W7 palette. Now I know some people say that her five pan mini palettes like this that are slightly bigger than a USB stick um, are a different formula to her main palettes. Um, and then you get people who say no they're exactly the same so I don't have one of her main palettes. I'm never likely to have one unless I win one in a giveaway. Um, because I'm not asking my husband to pay over a hundred quid for a bloody eyeshadow palette. I can't justify it. I just can't. I can just about justify the 50 odd quid that the Jeffrey palettes are. Because I know the quality of them. And you get a lot of bang for your buck in terms of weight of pigment in the palette. But there's no way I would ever, ever ask anyone to buy me a palette that was over 100 bucks. No, no bleeding way. That's blended really nicely together. But then as I said, this price should do. <laughs> Hubby, um, when he was doing the lawn the other day, he was saying he needs to, needs to repaint the Tiki Shack, which is his man cave. Um, when he said to me, he wanted to, because he's got one of these man caves at his mum's, that he's had since he was a teenager, which is painted just like, you know, normal shed colour, basically. That's the shed of dreams. Um, and he said to me, could he, when he first moved in, before we were married, he said, could he um, build a shed here? And I'm like, yep, yeah, but I don't want it boring shed colours. Because I've got a boring shed down there, which has got all of the gardening equipment in. I've got my lilac shed with all of the kitchen stuff that used to fit into the old kitchen and doesn't fit into the new one because... The kitchen, the wall cupboards now are half the depth they used to be, so you can't get half the stuff in. Plus we lost our corner larder and it was amazing how much you could actually fit in that. I mean it was like Mary Poppins carpet bag, it was just like, honestly, the amount of stuff that came out. Got to be honest, if it wasn't for the fact that I was disabled, then we wouldn't have got rid of that larder, we would have kept the larder covered and just got new units in rather than but I needed to have a built in oven because I couldn't bend to the oven anymore so I needed a you know an eye level oven if I was going to have any chance of doing any cooking although bless him hubby's taken over doing a lot of that for me I think it's because I taught my brother, my brother in law who's five years younger than hubby I taught him how to cook a roast because um, he now cooks on Christmas Day which is lovely after 30 odd years of cooking since I was like 14 years old was the first time that I cooked Christmas dinner um, and did so for a significant number of years um, so it's really nice that now I don't have to and someone else can do it for me um, but I think there was a little bit of one-upmanship between the brothers, if you catch my drift. As in, I can't have my younger brother capable of doing something I can't. So, hubby is now doing more cooking here. Right, I'm going to grab this brush. This is a... It's like an overly large pencil brush. I'll put a pencil brush next to it to give you an indication of size. But it is a blender, it's soft enough to be a blender, but it maintains that point. 
which is cool. And yes, that's the colour of the bristles. Black and teal. Right, so I'm going to go into shade number two, which is this one, which is a satin, but it's the deepest shade in the palette. So this is the one that I'm going to put through my natural crease. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you now follow the line that you've laid down. I'm just going to do tiny little circles because I don't want this to go too high up the eye because I don't want to lose that olive that we've just put down. So tiny little circles and just sort of dragging what's left like so. Tilt my head back this side because obviously being blind in the eye, if I close it, not a lot of blending goes on. But uh, the reason that we put the deepest shade through the crease is because light shades come forward, dark shades move back. So especially if we've had to move our crease line, by putting the deepest shade through the crease, it tricks the eye into thinking that part of the eye is further back. If you look, this eye now looks a lot deeper and a lot more defined than this one, simply because of adding a deeper shadow through the crease. So if you have had to move your crease line, you are now creating a false crease, like a trompe l'oeil effect. Uh, trompe l'oeil literally just means tricking the eye. Do the same this side, but obviously I can close this eye so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So I'm doing circular movements to about the halfway point and back again. Spreading it out at the outer edge here. And then just very lightly dragging what's left on the brush from the inner corner up. Now with this eye, I struggle because I have got super deep creasing just here, as you can see. Um, and in order, when I'm putting colours onto the mobile lid, onto this bit, I do actually have to stretch that lid out because otherwise I get the issue that the pigment just builds up loosely in the crease rather than being blended on and then um, throughout the day it sort of flakes off and gets in my eye and down my face and everything and can actually be proved to be quite painful but I will show you the way to do that causing as little additional damage to your eye as possible um, I also tend to get more fallout this side because this eye the skin is looser because it was pulled around so much when I was five years old. So we're talking 40 odd years ago. And, you know, I'm paying for that damage now. Which is just lovely. Lovely. Philadelphia. That's an old one. It was an old advert. In the uh, UK, if you're wondering, I haven't completely lost my rocker, although I do understand how it might be difficult to tell the difference sometimes. Right. I'm going to use the Revolution Cucumber Fixing Spray to wet the pigment after I've put it onto the brush. Uh, Voldemorphy. Which, let me find out her channel name. I can never remember her channel name. Hold on. One of my, one of my YouTube friends. Probably cut this waiting bit out. Rest. 
Yes, Makeup for Lost Time is her channel name. And it's Katie. She, she calls them Voldemorphy. And I love that. So this is my Voldemorphy M321. And I'm going to start off by going into shade 3. And then I shall go into shade 5. So I'm going to use all five of these shades in today's look. Now you should never, ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will kill the pigment. I promise you, you will kill the pigment. I am going to have a film. It'll either have just gone up or it'll be going up soon where I talk you through how to get rid of hard pan. Right, so I'm going to apply this. In the inner corner here and just drag that out about a third to halfway across the lid. That's pretty. Dry the brush, go back into the pigment. Now, as I was saying, with this eye, I do have to do things a little bit differently. But the trick is... You look at how much of your lid has the severe creasing. You then allow the same amount of lid space again, and then you put your finger on. Okay? And you gently stretch that lid out, only far enough to straighten out the creasing. So I'm not pulling it out to my ear well, I'm literally only pulling it out far enough to straighten the creasing. I'm applying the pigment, once the pigment's on, I'm letting go. Alright, so you do as little additional damage to your eye as possible. Right, now I'm going to go into the last shade in the palette. Like I said, these quints are cute, but obviously you are restricted a little bit to the number of looks you can do with just five shadows. But, that being said, it does make life a little bit quicker if you're in a rush because you don't have to sit there and think about which of the million shades you're going to use. So, I've applied the greeny gold to the lid. I'm just going to drag some of that gold across to blend those two shimmers together. And then use the very tip of the bristles to gently buff where the shimmer makes the deeper satin that we put on. So dry the brush off again to reload the pigment for the other eye. If there's any um, films that you want me to do, I mean, for example, the getting rid of hard pan was a request from one of you lovers. When you've spritzed your brush, always dry the ferrule. The easiest way to do that is tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Otherwise, you get moisture down here and you don't have a brush. You have a stick. So, same thing on this side, just applying the green. Yeah, if there's anything, I've got quite a few little mini tutorials up. I've got how to do winged liner, um, how to put on lashes, how to work your work out your um, eyebrow shape, whether you want a flat one like mine or you want a curved one. So if there's any specific 
areas you want me to cover. Um, I did one on colour theory, working out which colours go together and which colours will work together. Um, so like I said, if there's anything like that that you want me to include, then do just let me know and I will do my absolute best to stick a tutorial, mini or otherwise, onto my channel for you. Right, my beauties, I am going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation on and uh, I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now, I've got to wait a while before I can see you because, well, I've, I've got to put some stuff on my face. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. Hey, I am back. Right, as you can see, I have soaked my brows using the Revolution Soap Kit thing. You don't have to use that. You can just use a clean spoolie and an ordinary bar of soap. I don't wet the soap. I leave it dry because that leaves it slightly sticky. And then you can go in with one of these. I've just tapped it into the deepest colour that I ran through here. I'm just going to use this to fill in my brows. I have got a lot of different coloured pomades that I'd bought. Um, but Revolution seemed to have stopped stocking the coloured ones. I don't know if they're revamping them or if they're rebranding them or just completely got rid of them. Um, but I've had a lot of people say, oh, we really want to do the coloured brows, but we can't because we can't get hold of the pomades. What can we do? This is a great alternative because it can absolutely match your look because you're using an eyeshadow that you've already used or another one from you know the same palette um, by applying the soap dry when you then go over it with this powder it kind of sets it in place while at the same time giving the powder something to cling to. So for me at the moment this is a really easy way to do your coloured brows. Um, you can obviously shave your brows off and then draw them back in whatever colour you like. The only thing I would say about that is your eyebrows are there for a reason. And that reason is to catch sweat before it trickles into your eyes, stings like a mofo and leaves you squinting and half blind. So my advice would be to leave the hairs where they are, whenever possible. Right, going in with a flat top brush into that same shade, picking up from the outside corner and running that along the lower lash line. Um, I've always struggled with very watery eyes. Uh, one of my fibro symptoms is <laughs> watery eyes uh, and it's hay fever season and uh, Hubbard was titting around in the garden the other day so yeah. If I put anything, if I try and tight line or put anything on my water line uh, it's just hopeless. I mean sometimes even doing this the eyes will start watering and I can barely get the photos done before I start losing in a corner highlight or you know. It's a little bit frustrating to say the least. 
Right, you can use any kind of smudger brush that you want. I really like this one. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped, but it's chunky. Now that palette was meant to be limited edition and the last time I checked it was still on Tarte's site. So I'm going to dip into the olive matte. And I'm going to use that just to soften and blend out the lower lash line. I always flinch this side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision. And uh, the viewfinder is quite a long way away. So I'm pretty much relying on muscle memory to uh, not poke myself in the eye. Regular viewers will be able to tell you how often I fail at that. I do like this look. I like this look a lot. And I think I'm going to grab my Colourpop Disney Villains Cruella. You fools, you idiots, you imbeciles. For the highlight, which looks like this. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over 10 years ago now. But it's the perfect size just for lining up under your brow like so and doing the inner corner now when I do my inner corner I like to bring it along under the tear duct and blend in with whatever colour I have flowed under the eye. So like the eye is starting to water already so I was trying to preempt it. By putting a little bit of lighter, brighter shade in the inner corner here, it just brightens it up and makes your eyes look more awake and more open because we all have darker dimples just either side of the nose there. That's your, your nasal cavity, unfortunately, there's nothing no, you can do about it. Um, and by putting it up under your brows gives the illusion of your brows being higher because apparently Brows, like everything else, are subject to gravity over the years. Isn't that just wonderful? Just wonderful. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more Cruella on the high points of my face. Stick some mascara on. Choose a lippy. Probably not the Wayne Goss one because that's... I got it in shade Amaryllis, which is a peachy toned one, which I don't think is going to work with this particular eye look but I do have a new dose of colours lipstick that I want to try so I will be back with my finished look once again my darlings for you completely instant I am done hair's gone a bit crazy but then let's face it when doesn't my hair oh a little bit of the bubbly uh, mascara I used today was the Benefit Bad Girl Bang. Uh, the lippy is this dose of colours, what is it? S Lipid Up Satin Lipstick in the shade Cinnamon Swirl, which I really like. I think it blends beautifully with this particular eye look, which is, of course, the Mini Gold from Natasha Denona. Okay. Honest thoughts. Do I like it? Yes. Uh, do I think it performed any better than this? No. Am I glad I got it? 
Yes, because it stopped me craving the large one quite so much now, because I know that my W7 one performs just as well, if not better, than this one does. Given the choice between this and W7, which do I recommend you buy? The W7. Um, it does keep going in and out of stock on their website, so it seems like quite a few people have picked up on how good that particular palette really is. So, what do you think? If you want more regular viewers, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people still. Literally every time I put a film up, I lose between one and four subs. Every single time. Um, thankfully the majority of them seem to be finding their way back. But to say that channel growth has stagnated is... Uh, and in that respect, once you've checked, you're still subscribed. A like and a comment and a share, if you could manage it, would be super helpful in terms of the algorithm and pushing this film out to other people. Talking of other people, if this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it here. This is the kind of nonsense that you're going to get from me on this channel. Um, it would be awesome if you too would like to join in the fun and games. It is super easy, there's a bright red subscribe button. Just click that, turn it to grey, ring the bell, say yes, 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 all of them, yes, all of them, yes I'm sure. And hopefully YouTube will tell you about one in four of my films that I put up. Speaking of which, there are an awful lot of other films you can watch. Not just that one with the W7 palette, there are an awful lot of other palette reviews, collaborations, challenges, tag films. You're bound to find something on here that will interest you, I'm sure. So basically, as I've said for some time now, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. What better to do during lockdown? and learn a few new skills. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.